Hey everyone, welcome back. We're gonna do a deep dive into something uh, pretty interesting, I thought, um, this whole thing with Anna Kendrick and, and this director that, that kind of um, publicly criticized her on set. So we've got four different articles about it, uh, kind of all saying the same thing, but but a little bit different perspectives. Um, so we're gonna try to unpack it and understand what happened and the, the power dynamics mm -hmm. and what it all means, you know, for actors and creatives and, and that whole thing. Yeah, I think it's it's a really important conversation to be having. It's, it's fascinating to watch these dynamics play out, Yeah, particularly in a, in a high stakes industry like Hollywood. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, um, okay, so picture this Anna Kendrick, right? You know, her pitch perfect up in the air she's on a movie set and there's like a hundred extras around oh wow yeah so it's a pretty high pressure situation to begin with right a lot of eyes on you yeah exactly so the director who shall remain nameless asks her to improvise a scene which on the surface seems pretty standard i think you know mm -hmm. directors often use improv as a way to like bring some spontaneity to a scene or a fresh perspective. Yeah. You never know what you're going to do. You could unlock something really special in the performance. Yeah, for sure. But uh, here's where things take a turn. She does the improv, and the director immediately shuts it down Yeah. in front of everybody and, and then says, oof, let's go back to the script. Oh, wow. Yeah. That must have been so demoralizing, especially yeah. in front of that many people. Yeah. And it kind of speaks to this power dynamic that can exist on set where like a director's word just carries so much weight. Yeah, it's like the the ultimate, you know, say so. So um, and and she has said that she she felt publicly humiliated and, and called it like a power move on the director's part. But mm -hmm. here's the crazy thing. The improv that got shut down. Yeah. Ended up in the trailer for the film. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. So that adds a whole other layer to it, doesn't it? It makes you wonder about the director's motivations. Right. Like, why even ask for the improv if you're just going to shoot it down mm. so harshly? Right. And then use it anyway. No. Right. It's almost like the director realized that they'd stumbled onto something good, but just couldn't admit it or something in the yeah. moment. It's possible. I mean, it really does raise the question of whether or not this director was even aware of the impact that their actions would have on, on Kendrick, not mm. just professionally, but personally. You know, emotionally. For sure. That's a good point. It's a good reminder that, that power dynamics exist. Yeah. Even in what are supposed to be creative collaborations. Yeah. And it, and it makes you think about all these different ways that power can manifest on set. You know, I think we, we think of it as a very top-down, you know, hierarchy kind of thing. But, yeah. but there's subtler forms of power as well, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, it can show up in, in things like whose ideas are listened to, yeah. who gets credit for creative contributions, even how feedback is given. You yeah. know, it's not always like this overt, this director publicly rejecting an actor's improv, but it, but those subtle dynamics I think can be just as impactful. Yeah, and she uh, she didn't hold back in her response either. Uh, no. During a podcast interview, she basically said, "Screw you" to the director. Good for her. Yeah. It sounds like she needed to reclaim some of her agency there. Yeah. And just you know speak her truth. Right. And how do we create more collaborative and respectful environments on set? Ones where everybody feels empowered to contribute their ideas and, and be valued regardless of where they are on the, you know, totem pole or whatever. That's a that's a really great question. And I think something that every director, producer, creative leader really needs to consider. Yeah. Now, this is where things get even more interesting, I think. So Anna Kendrick recently made her directorial debut oh. with this film, Woman of the Hour. Uh, it's a thriller based on the true story of of this serial killer, Rodney Alcala. Yes, I, I had heard about this. Yeah. I'm very curious to see how her experiences as an actor, mm -hmm. both positive and negative, might have shaped her approach to directing. Yeah, me too. It's like she's come full circle, right? From being an actor who's subject to this kind of behavior to now being the one calling the shots. It's pretty amazing. And I think it's safe to say that those experiences probably gave her some valuable insights into the kind of director that she doesn't want to be. You're right. But but let's unpack that a little bit more. It makes you wonder, you know, did she take this and use this, yeah. you know, to fuel a more collaborative mm. and empowering approach to directing? Right. It's almost as like if she's got this insider knowledge now of what not to do, which can be so valuable. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think are some of the concrete ways that her experience as an actor might actually inform her approach as a director? Well, I think having been in that vulnerable position herself, mm -hmm. she might be more attuned to an actor's process, you know, the need for clear communication, mm -hmm. constructive feedback, 
and a safe space to experiment. Right. It's not just about avoiding the negative, like the public humiliation, but actually, like you said, creating that space mm -hmm. where they feel supported and empowered to do their best work. Exactly. And that can extend beyond just the actors to the entire crew. You know, mm -hmm. a director who understands the importance of fostering that positive, collaborative set culture yeah. can make a huge difference in, in the overall creative energy of a project. Yeah, it's like a ripple effect of good vibes, Yeah, you know, where everybody feels respected and valued for their contributions. Absolutely. And that can lead to more creative risk taking, more open communication, and ultimately, I think, a better final product. Yeah, this reminds me of something you said earlier about these like more subtle ways that power dynamics can manifest on set. Do you have any like specific examples of, of how that might play out? Sure. Um, think about like casting decisions. Yeah. A director who is mindful of those power dynamics might actively seek out diverse talent and give opportunities to actors who haven't traditionally been represented. That's a great example. Or how about like when changes are made to a script? A director who really values collaboration might involve the actors in those conversations. Yeah, and even seemingly small things like how feedback is given or how crew members are treated. All of those little things can contribute to this overall sense of, you know, power dynamics on set. It's really about creating that culture of respect that, that permeates, you know, every aspect of the production. Exactly. And that culture starts at the top with the director. So we've been talking a lot about Anna Kendrick and her experience, but I think there are some really valuable takeaways here for anybody, whether you're in the film industry or not. Absolutely. It's a reminder that power dynamics exist in all sorts of relationships, yeah. professional and personal. Yeah. And, and that we all have a responsibility to be mindful of of the power that we hold and how we wield it. You know, whether you're a manager, a teacher, a parent, even just a friend, there's always these dynamics at play. For sure. And and being aware of those dynamics, yeah. you know, allows us to make more conscious choices mm -hmm. about how we interact with other people, how we give feedback, and how we create environments where everyone feels safe, respected, and valued. Okay, before we wrap up, I want to kind of loop back to, to something we touched on earlier, uh -huh. which is Kendrick's decision to actually speak out against the director's behavior. It seems like she could have easily just stayed silent, but she chose to share her experience. Yeah, and, and I think there's a lot of power in that. Oh. By speaking out, Yeah, she brought attention to an issue that a lot of people, especially in creative industries, might be afraid to talk about. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage to stand up for yourself, especially when you're going against someone in a position of power like that. Absolutely. And uh, while her response was definitely direct, yeah. I think it also highlights the importance of advocating for yourself and, and setting boundaries. Yeah, speaking up can be so important, not only for your own well-being, but for creating a culture where these kinds of behaviors aren't tolerated. Right. It can inspire other people to do the same. Yeah. And hopefully lead to more positive and equitable environments for everyone. Okay, so as we wrap up this steep dive, I want to leave our listener with a little something to ponder. Imagine you're in Kendrick's shoes, stepping onto a set, not as an actor, but as a director. What kind of environment would you create? Mm. What lessons would you take from your own experiences, you know, both positive and negative? Oh, that's such a great question to think about. Um, I, I think it's a challenge to any creative leader. How do you balance your own vision with... You know, that need to create a space where everybody feels empowered yeah. to contribute their best work. Yeah. It's a delicate balance for sure, but I think it starts with, you know, fostering that culture of open communication. You know, a director who actively listens to their team, solicits feedback, is open to different perspectives. That's going to create a much more collaborative environment. Yeah, totally. And it goes beyond just listening. It's creating that space where people feel safe to speak up, to share their ideas, to disagree even, without fear of, you know, retribution or anything. Absolutely. And I think clear communication about expectations is also key. Yeah. When everyone understands their roles, you know, the goals of the project, how their contributions fit into the bigger picture, mm -hmm. it can really help to create this sense of shared purpose and ownership. It's like building that foundation of trust and respect. Yeah. You know, where everybody feels like they're part of something bigger than themselves. And that feeling of shared purpose is so powerful, not just for the creative process, mm -hmm. but for, you know, everybody's well-being, I think. Yeah. And, and you know, thinking back to the beginning of our deep dive, it seems like that director and Kendrick's story maybe missed an opportunity to turn what could have been a negative experience into a learning moment. Yeah. You know, instead of just shutting down the improv, what if they had used it as a chance to engage in a dialogue? to explore different creative possibilities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, it's those moments of unexpected detours that sometimes lead to like the most brilliant discoveries. A director who 
embraces that kind of spontaneous creativity, mm -hmm. who sees those mistakes as opportunities, can really unlock something special. Totally. So to our listener out there, whether you're an aspiring director, an actor, a writer, anyone who works in a creative field, remember that you have the power to shape the culture of your own creative spaces. Be the kind of leader who fosters collaboration, who values open communication, and who creates environments where everyone feels safe to take risks and, and express their unique talents. That's a great way to put it. I think that's the perfect note to end on. Thanks for joining me for this really fascinating deep dive. It's definitely given me a lot to think about. It's always a pleasure to dive deep with you. Until next time.